talk about is goggle eyes, but blue runners are just as good. Mullet work fine. Um, same principles, put it on a stinger rig. Um, and then and then jig, a vertical jig. Uh, when I've caught tuna, I don't think I've ever marked fish on my fish finder when I caught a tuna. So for that reason, I still will just blind drop uh, in certain depths. And not all day long, but, but um, for the most part, I'm generally watching my fish finder. I have my baits out that I'm trolling. I watch my fish finder to see if uh, you know I mark, mark structure, uh, pass over a wreck, or if I'm marking fish or bait, then I work my jig you know, in that area. But uh, it's pretty productive. I've, I think I've only got skunk one time out of, I've probably done this trip down there now maybe 25 times, uh, maybe 20 times this year. And uh, I think only one time that I've ever got skunked where I didn't get anything. Other than that, it's, it's usually been pretty pretty consistent action. Uh, days that I, I, I wish that I would have caught something better, you know, seven barracudas in a day or something like that. But you never know what it is when, you know, it can literally be, you know, a 13-foot hammerhead shark or a 10-inch bonita that eats your bait. And, uh, that's, that's about all that I, I mean, really have to say. Your bait's very important. If you don't have plumbing, you need to change your water drain and change your water very often, very often. Because, like I said, you're not, you don't have another chance. When if you got four baits in there and one dies, you just lost the 25% chance of catching the fish. And um, you know, I, I'm personally very conscious of that. Those just run off of batteries? Yeah, those D are just batteries. D batteries in there. Yeah. A lot of good points, Jeff. The hole. Yeah, so so I just have a plug on the inside of it and it comes out through the outside right here in the crate and then just drains right through the scupper. Yeah, I don't you know, I didn't feel the need to run a tube down into the scupper because that way if a wave or anything comes over, it's kind of clogs up that that for that water to go out. You've had this boat a while? Yeah, about two years now. You ever had trouble with the drive? No. The chain break or anything? Or? No, I've, I've never had anything break on it. Uh, I, had, I had one pin that bent uh, and I just straightened it back out. And uh, me, this, this works. This is my down for my rudder. Uh, my little bungee on the inside or whatever that pulls it back in is broke. I, I broke my pin, uh, my rudder pin, one time coming into the sand without having to have me pulled up. But if, I, listen, here's what I suggest, and this is what I do every time. I don't care what the surf is. I jump out of my kayak. I, you know, I would rather be up to here in water because if you're out of that kayak and can keep it pointed the right way, it's, you know, you can stand in the surf and let the... And let the Float, float on the water rather than you being in it and, and tipping. So I jump out of the water whether the surf is this high or whether it's this high. And uh, you know, if somewhere where I feel is you know around chest to waist deep, I get out, I steady my boat, I time my waves, and I and I go in uh, because I have flipped in the surf. I lost a seven hundred dollar dive computer in the surf. Um, you know, I've lost a lot of stuff on on hard lessons. But make sure, make sure that everything is leash man. You know, you're in 400 feet of water, and put a, put a leash on everything. Uh, keep everything secure because you never know what can happen. You know, I've had close calls uh, and other issues when I like when I pulled that that amberjack into the kayak, and you know, I got it up over this way, but it kind of went almost too far to the right. And, and everything would have been gone again about a fish because because I don't uh, they're just cumbersome they're, they're a pain in the butt when you're stretching them over you and you want to move oh around God. over here you know I'm, I'm man I'm trying to fish so that's why I don't but I strongly recommend that you do
I like tethers and everything like that. Uh, you know, being out there, sure. we lose stuff all the time. You know, the, the ocean's taking everything from us sometimes. But uh, the thing about tethers kind of bothers me in re-entry. When you're re-entering into the surf and you do happen to flip your kayak, a lot of times when you wind up finding, I don't know how many people here have been offshore, when you wind up finding is that once it flips over, you got a bunch of poles everywhere, right? You're trying to collect these poles while you're still in the hot zone, right? What happens is they end up tying up around your legs and pulling you around. A wave will hit the kayak and pull your feet out from under you. It turns into a little bit of a mess, which tethers are still good. But what I like to do when I come back in, of course, when you go down south, like what Jeff does, Jeff's, Jeff's pro south, uh, you know, you're going to want to keep a lot of this gear and stuff with you. This is all stuff that you use out there. I mean, it's, it's serious. I do I do all my fishing here locally, offshore locally. You know, I go to the cave, I'll do pretty decent work, satellite beat. So I don't really need as many reels and rods. So what I do is I take my two or three rods and I'll put them, line them straight up parallel with the kayak on the side and I'll tie them off to say that or maybe something over here. I can kind of stick them in there and, and just bungee them so they're flat and long. So you don't have to worry about them flipping over, breaking, flipping over the tether line, wrapping around your legs while you're trying to get out of the surf. What Jeff said earlier was was 100%. You know, don't try to don't try to surf these things in. None of these things are made to surf in. If you do, you know, and, and I've done it plenty of times, lean into the wave. You guys ever heard of that? Kind of. If the waves got you, it's gonna it's gonna naturally point you over to the side. Totally left, right, whichever way it's gonna point you. You're just gonna want to lean all your weight right into that wave and just kind of cruise with it as it goes along. That's what you're gonna want to do. But otherwise, what he says is probably the safest way to do it. You know that the waves are crashing. You're already gonna be in three feet of water because waves don't crash in deep water. You're gonna be able to stand in it. So what I do is just like you do when you go out, you count the waves when you're on your way out. You know, it usually comes in sets of fours and fives, maybe one rogue. Uh, that's how you launch. And when you come back in, you're gonna be standing behind this wave now. Waves look way bigger on the out, on the outside than they do. They look like you look like you're on top of a cliff. You're like, oh man, the waves got bigger. No, they didn't. You're just behind the wall. Um, so you try to you try to time that set out again. You got four waves coming. One, two, three, four. That fourth wave comes, and you come right up behind it. You go as far as you can. Get all the way in as far as you can while keeping your eye in the back of you because that other wave is going to build up. Once that wave behind you builds up, it's going to naturally suck you back out. So once that wave gets close enough to you, I already have my leg off. I have my leg off because I, I, I do around here and down south, really there's not, it's not as, not as big a surf down south. Over here, you know, you're always dealing with something crazy out here. So I always keep one leg over on the side. I have the same kayak as his. And uh, once that big wave is almost tail on my tail end, I hop right off and you grab the back end of your kayak, never the front end, because then it turns into a torpedo and you lose teeth. Then. So uh, that's probably the best way to do that if you want to stay on the safe side. Just jump off. It's easy. You know? Otherwise, I've rode them in many a times too and crash in every different direction you can possibly crash. And still, I've never got hurt. I'm still walking. So. But uh, remember, it's just water. When, you, when you're back behind that wall, you, you, you may panic just a little bit. You may say, oh man, you know, because you're so used to black water. But, uh, you know, if you, if you haven't really got offshore in kayak recently. Yeah. I've heard of people uh, turning and diving into the wave and, yep, and, and, and paddle, paddling backwards. That's right, right way where, to they, do it. where they turn around and with their back towards the shore and actually pedal backwards. So that way, you know, if, if the wave comes, it hits the front of the kayak, you can maintain control and essentially back your way right into the beach. Uh, I've never done that. I've just... I've just seen people do heard that. heard about it, but I don't yeah. ever try it. Yeah, <laughs> you, you do that and you're in the hot zone and you're, you're, you're sideways turning trying to get to that wave. You know what I mean? I mean, you, you can always back up from far, far, far away and try to do it that way, but I've seen people crash with that too. Uh, I guess like what Jeff said earlier, you know, the best way is just hop right off and, and going out. I don't know if Jeff touched up on that you know, earlier, you know, with count the sets, it's the same thing. You've got two to three foot swells, you can break through them, you can push through them, you know what I mean? If it's two to three, you can push through them. So you're going to count that, you're going to count it, throw your kayak out in front of you, jump in it, paddle, paddle, paddle as fast as you can, and you will crush those waves. You will go right through those waves. As long as you've got a forward force behind you, you're going to break right, you're going to cut right through those waves, even if it crashes on you, you will cut through. Now I can't say much for four to six foot waves, you know, you, you're on your own on that one, but one of the main things is magic seaweed. 
they're, they're pretty accurate. I do cross-reference Magic Seaweed and your weather report. So if Magic Seaweed's saying one to two foot, and then you look at the weather report and saying 18, 19 mile an hour gust, you might want to just call it that day and say, nah, you know what? It's going to be rough, it's going to be choppy. Those waves might be uh, larger than usual just because of the wind. Um, You know, it says two to three foot swells and you got uh, you know 10 mile an hour winds give it a shot you know go on out there and, and you'll you'll love it uh jeff uh man, he i was out there a few times with him and he, he outfishes the hell out of me down south he, he makes me look like a fool i've been doing it uh i've been going offshore been kayaking for six years i've been going offshore for four it's straight four I, that's that's the only thing that's my passion i like being offshore you think you know, people think that going to the river is disconnecting for me. Getting out there into the ocean, we ain't got nothing in front of you. That's disconnecting. You know, it's amazing out there. There's a lot of big fish. There's a lot of clean fish. You catch a snook inshore over here. We don't get like what they have down south. Down south, it's all business. That's why you got all this stuff. I, I'm, I'm, I'm a very simple fisherman. I got a, I got no fish finder. I just use my psychic abilities, and that's about it. I go over here, and uh, we catch a lot of inshore fish here. Uh, you catch drum in the surf, snook in the surf. Catch a lot of large tarpon out here. We got tarpon, big, big tarpon. I know they got them on the west side too. Tarpon City, right here, at a light beach area. Uh, you know, you got triple tail. You might get lucky, catch a cobia. Uh, there's flounder out here. There are some fish out here. It's just not as, as great of, of a fish that you're going to catch a trophy fish like you're going to catch down south. Of course, I don't, uh, I don't, I don't, I don't have the, all the gear for down south. I do go down there with them, but uh, you know, going down south is like it's, it's, it's big time. So if you new to the hobby and you want to give it a shot but you don't have all the gear and stuff like that you know uh, I recommend you know just trying to get out you can even go through the cape of course there's boat traffic in the cape you got to watch that you got to have a flag but you won't have to break through the surf and it gives you an idea of what the ocean is like being out there in the kayak in the ocean if you don't have to break through the waves you got to deal with the boat traffic that's Cape Canaveral it's the only place I know of around here you can get out there without having to work the waves in the morning I mean, I fish around there too. I fish around the, the Cape and the Port. Uh, there's definitely good fishing. Caught plenty of big fish. Uh, at night, I fish the Port. There's several lights uh, that are all throughout the Port. And it's not really, it looks like a long way, you know, when you put it into the boat ramp. But really, if you just paddle, uh, in, like in the, in the second turning basin, uh, there's a, a beachy area, like, so if you're coming from the, the ramp near the jetty and you head west towards the second turning basin, back in that far corner, there's like a beachy area that has a light on it at night. That's a good area. I've seen, I've been over there uh, in boat and kayak and you can see the, uh, of course not every time, you know, but um, can see the snook and redfish right in the in the light in the shadow area yeah i almost got arrested there uh, a month ago did you? <laughs> yeah yeah i did <laughs> was... well i'm not going to tell you i'm not going to tell you guys about the fish that are under the docks <laughs> they tied my kayak off to the side broke me back to the boat ramp you know because i was in the restricted area over there they wanted to make an example out of me i guess yeah but there's there's a lot of good fish in, in the port uh, one day I went nine for 14 on snook, and they were all slots right across from the boat ramp on the um, right by the rocks, just tossing live, uh, live mullet, live finger mullet, and just on a on a school oven that day. But that's generally what I do uh, when I fish the port. Is out this port and across from the boat ramp, or the rocks. Um, I go as far into the Trident Basin until they. Fish around the port. I mean, the, the jetties has been very well. I like. I have a boat too, and I prefer to fish my kayak because I don't have, you know, I don't have a four thousand dollar iPilot um, trolling motor. You know what I mean? So I can maneuver this, stay up close, very close to the rocks, comfortably compared to, you know, even with the swell and everything that where a boat is not comfortable doing what I'm doing. And uh, you know, I've been out there with three or four boats around me and, and I caught two fish and none of them caught any fish just because I liked it, how I can maneuver this. I wish I had the, re the reverse, the 180. And <laughs> yeah, for real. I only have a boat now, my, my step had uh, left it to me, but 
that's the only reason I have that otherwise.